What's up guys? Welcome to the gym basics video number two. This one is going to be on my personal favorite lift, the deadlift. The deadlift in my mind is also the most complicated because there are so many things involved in it. It's literally a full body exercise. The very first step in a perfect deadlift is a breathe and brace. So if you don't know how to breathe properly into your diaphragm, that is something to practice and include in your warm up to actually get an adequate breathe brace it down, right? What I like to do is start with my nose, inhale through my nose, trying to fill my stomach with air and not just my stomach in the front, my obliques and my back. You're trying to build your whole core to be as stable as possible. So in through my nose and then my mouth, push it down. If you notice when you're breathing that you're going, you need to work on pushing your air down and breathing down. This is something you can practice outside of the gym inside of the gym when you're sitting in the car. I do it all the time. I'm sitting there bracing and I really like to act, you know, whenever you're little, you're trying to show like, oh, look, I'm pregnant and you push your stomach out. You're really trying to do that when you breathe and brace. I'm gonna show you right now with my stomach, what I do is when I breathe, you'll notice even it's over from the side. I'm trying to fill with air, fill, fill, fill until I can't get any more through my nose and I start breathing through my mouth. So. Relax, I'm gonna go. Pushing my air out in all directions. It's called 360 degrees of breathing. It's super important. Now that's important to be stable in your deadlift and protect your low back. The number one cure for low back pain, in my opinion, with a deadlift is first correct your breathe and brace. Most of the time, people have an issue with their setup. It's not that they're not strong enough. It's not that their back is weak. It's not that they have back problems, even though they, they could. It really is about the breathe and brace and the setup. So let's run through the setup with a couple really important points. Number one is where the bar is in relation to your body. So I'm gonna bring the camera down to the floor and I'm gonna show you with the bar totally empty where it likes to sit and where it should sit. Can we get it there? Mid foot. So this is even a little too far forward. When I have that bar, it's in line with the middle of my foot. It's not way up here by my toes. From the side, you'll see, when I set it for my deadlift, it is in line with the middle of my foot. I literally have it so it's as close to my body as possible. That's number one. Number two is engaging your lats. A lot of people really struggle with lat engagement. Big cues would be trying to bend the bar over your shins. So literally imagine that you have the bar, it's like a piece of PVC pipe and you're bending it. I want you to pull as much as you can so your shoulders are back and down. So you have all this tension and your lats are actually engaging. That's gonna be a huge part of your setup. So once you're in this position where you're breathing and bracing properly, and I'm here, and I have the bar in line with my midfoot, right here, this rounded back, that's not gonna work. So hinging from the hips first, look at my butt, hinge it back. I'm not bending, I am hinging. I grab the bar, and for a lot of people, over under is gonna be a lot stronger for grip rather than double over, but you're gonna grab the bar, Hinge from the hips, grab your bar, and then only is that, only when I have the bar in my hand do I actually bend my knees. And from this point, I try to keep that little arch in my low back, and I drop my butt and lift my hips. And from this point, I'm gonna pull the slack out of the bar. I'm bending the bar over my shins. I'm gonna take my big in breath. Brace it down. And then as you lift, it's riding the shins, riding the shins. And then as soon as you get to the knees, you drive your hips through. So that's it in slow motion. You never actually want to do it that slow, but from here, big breath. I'm pulling the bar like I'm trying to break it through my shins, trying to break it in half. Hinge and lift. Big mistakes I see a lot. People deadlift like this. They got their neck craned. So you're putting your spine in bad alignment. Get your neck down, set your hips back, and go. The deadlift has a lot of really small points that you'll realize that you may be doing incorrectly or not quite right. So number one, bar in line with the middle of your foot. Number two, pulling the slack out. You need to pull the slack out of the bar and out of your body. If you're loose and your arms are loose hanging, you have no power. If you have your toes up, 
no power. Grip the ground with your feet. A lot of people like to imagine when they're in their deadlift, they're not lifting the bar, they are pushing the floor away. So you have that bar in your hand as if it's an immovable object, it's not gonna move, and you are going to literally shove the floor away and stand up. That's how to imagine it. If that's helpful, I really try to picture that. My feet are about shoulder width apart, and I'm pushing the floor away. So I've literally taken myself in this crouch position, boom, you shove the floor away, the bar should be riding the shins. A lot of people, elite power lifters with a deadlift, come away with their shins just bleeding because they literally cut their shins coming up with so much power because it was so close. So, set up in order. Number one, make sure, make sure the bar is even with weight on each side, one. Number two, bar in line with the middle of your foot. It's not in front of you, it's in line with the middle of your foot. Initiate through your hips, one. And then grab the bar, over under is gonna be the most powerful, especially as you get to have your loads. And then you're gonna pull the slack out of the bar, out of your body, like you're trying to bend the bar in half over your shins. Drop your hips a little bit, because whenever we tend to set up, we're then we're kind of like this, and this isn't so powerful. If we drop a little bit, we get a little more quads. We have everything is closer and tighter. Your weight close, it's like a spring. If a spring is way out, it doesn't have as much. But if you have that spring, totally coiled and tight, you're gonna have maximal power. So make sure you drop your hips a little bit, bring your chest up, and then last tip is don't crane your neck up here. Don't look up there, you're not going up there. You're going here. So keep your neck forward, don't let your head drift way over the bar. Set your hips, get your chest, big breath, you're hinging, you're standing, and then you hinge your hips. Make sure you squeeze your glutes at lockout, and don't ignore the breathe and brace. Practice it in your warm up. Practice it in your warm up sets. Practice when you're outside of the gym and you have a perfect deadlift, guys. Keep it close to your body. Film yourself from the side. Watch yourself. Film yourself from the front. See if you have seen any kind of knee cave. And make sure that you're not standing too wide. We're not doing a sumo deadlift. This is a regular conventional deadlift. Good luck.